Again, I think the asteroid redirect mission gets us some um, exposure to a, a slightly different environment. We call it the proving ground of space. And by that, it lets us home techniques and processes that um, are a little bit different than we're used to in low Earth orbit or in the Earth reliant region, but they're a little bit of a stretch. So, for example, you know, we can return in a matter of hours from from space station. It's it's not a big deal to to come back from space station. Um, you know, we can do that if if we have a problem, the crew can return. But from from the cislunar region or the distant retrograde orbit, it takes us roughly four to five days, depending on where we are, to come back. So we now need to have procedures that reflect that immediately come home is not an option. You're going to have to have system reliability and redundancy and, and fault tolerance such that you can tolerate five days. So that's a step. That's not where you're going to be when you go to Mars. When you go to Mars, it's going to be multiple months to, to years before you can get back. So if you can't figure out how to deal with, with five days, there's not hope for the one year kind of case. So, so the idea is we can gain experience in how we manage faults, how we manage risk, how we provide redundancy, all those things we'll learn in this proving ground of space. The other thing we have to do is we're going to have to, to rendezvous potentially on the far side of the moon where we don't have good communications with the Earth. So that makes us do essentially a rendezvous in a situation where we don't have good communications with the Earth, where the ground isn't watching, or the flight control teams are not watching, or they're not available. You're clearly going to have to do that at Mars. When you have time delays on the order of 15 to 20 minutes, you're not, the crew is going to be solely responsible for those rendezvous activities. So those rendezvous activities we're doing on the far side of the moon, the way we build those techniques, we, the way we build those procedures are directly applicable to what we'll have to do in, in Mars class missions. So that's again allowing us to, to gain experience. Another thing we talk about is maybe someday we put a, a crew tended uh, habitation module around the moon in this proving ground of space. The idea there is we don't have a crew on board all the time, but we take a crew up periodically to this facility to do either research on the surface to remotely command robots on the far side, or rovers on the far side of the moon, deploy antennas, those kind of things. But this habitation module would be the same habitation module we would try to use for a Mars class mission, so we don't have to replicate or build a new habitation module. We would gain experience then in the proving ground of space of what deep space radiation is like. We get a chance to really see the galactic cosmic background radiation. We would get a chance to look at shielding techniques. And then we also get a chance to experiment with a different concept where we have essentially a, a vehicle that is not continually crewed and it just it essentially is around the moon. Then when the crew arrives, it immediately has to be activated, come online and operate. We could envision the very same thing in the Martian environment. We have a habitation module either on, a, on Phobos or Deimos, or we have one in, in orbit around Mars. If we go there, it will have sat dormant for maybe a year or two, and then all of a sudden it has to be active and be fully functional to support the crew when they arrive. That is their safe haven when they get there. So we can demonstrate that exact safe haven philosophy, that safe haven capability, the fast activation. We can demonstrate all of that in the proving ground of space. So when I think of, of cislunar space, I think of it much like Mercury and Gemini did for Apollo, what, what they did for us in Apollo. They allowed us to look at concepts, procedures, hardware that we were going to need for Apollo to do the moon class missions. This proving ground to space where the asteroid will be will allow us to build these procedures, these concepts, this hardware that will eventually allow us to be Mars ready or Earth independent and that's where we want to go as we move forward. So you can see we're building essentially a stepwise approach starting from the space station, moving to cislunar space and then eventually moving to Mars.